Well, welcome back. Um, I wanted to continue on. Well, you know, I hope everybody's doing well with the uh, virus that's uh, spreading around and, and certainly hope everybody is okay. Uh, what I wanted to take a look at today would be the derivative of um, the, or the gradient of curvature. This is an attribute, a seismic attribute that is often uh, touted as being a um, an attribute useful for locating in your seismic locating intensely fractured zones uh, uh, or faults. And uh, we're going to use a simple sinusoid in order to evaluate this problem. Uh, we've got uh, the uh, peak uh, over here, which could be an anticline. This would be a syncline. We're showing the, uh, the fault here is cutting the flank. In this case, a reverse fault it could be, uh, you know, you could have a normal fault situation. Uh, but it probably wouldn't have this um, kind of urgence uh, in your um, your fold. So we'll start off just by defining what the um, what the uh, curvature is. The curvature is defined as the uh, if we have a function f of r in our case, it would be the uh, sinusoid. We take its uh, second derivative, and then we divide it by one plus the first derivative squared and take all this to the 3 halves power. So again, uh, you know, just the standard notation for the derivative and the second derivative, first and second derivatives of a function f of r, which we're going to be using the, uh, <clears throat> uh, the uh, uh, sine, uh, or the negative cosine here. So the radius of curvature is just 1 over the curvature. So here we have um, f of x, you know, in this case, as I pointed out, we have a sinusoid here. In, in the case that I'm using, it's negative cosine of x. And uh, so f is negative cosine of x. The derivative is the sine of x. The second derivative is just going to be the cosine of x. And we kind of go back and forth with the, it kind of makes this an easy function to work with. Uh, to get the uh, curvature here, we just have the cosine of x over 1 plus the sine squared of x to the 3 halves power. And you can see here uh, the input function, our f of x, uh, minus cosine of x in this case, and the curvature. And we have, um, and this is really a matter of convention, we have the uh, <coughs> curvature defined as positive when the osculating circle here sits above the curve, and negative when it sits below the curve. So we have uh, sharpened uh, curvature peaks here over the syncline and a uh, uh, negative trough here beneath the syncline. So again, you know, positive and negative, or, and you'll see this in the literature, in the geophysics uh, literature, you'll often see it defined in the opposite, uh, opposite manner. But in this particular case, for just to start, We've got positive and negative defined in terms of the center of an osculating circle, and we can consider this to be the circle, which is tangent to the curve at this particular point. And if the uh, center of this osculating circle lies above the line, it's considered to be, by convention, again, to be positive. Uh, if it sits uh, below the line, as it does over in this area, it would be negative. So again, this is just, just a convention, uh, and you'll see different conventions used in the, in the literature. Um, the fault is, you know, lies over the inflection point in this particular case. Um, if this were a normal fault, uh, then we'd see a fault gap in here. Um, the uh, fault surface, you know, whether or not we could actually image the fault surface or whether we could even see the limb of the syncline really depends on the offsets that uh, we uh, we have in our acquisition geometry. Um, here I've drawn kind of a large osculating circle tangent to the uh, uh, the location of the fault right here. You can see that it's going to have a very large R in that case, with R being very large, uh, going to infinity. Let's say as this becomes a plane. That gives us a radius of that gives us curvature then, which is the reciprocal of the radius of curvature. Then, uh, curvature would be equal to zero. Right here at the uh, at the fault, and again, you know, I, I want you to emphasize that whether or not you see the fault, 
uh, whether or not you even see the limb really depends on um, the range of source receiver offsets that you have as well as the migration uh, approach to migration that you're using. So here's the uh, derivative of curvature. We just calculated the curvature there. This is the derivative. We've just taken the derivative of this term here. We get this combination of sinusoids and I've just shown the uh, <clears throat> shown the, uh, the curvature uh, over here on the uh, left. And the, the relationship that it has to the curvature, well, it's the derivative of curvature. So you expect if you're taking the derivative, then the tangent here to the curvature would be uh, 0 at this, at this particular point. So be right over here. But notice a couple other features associated with this. If we take a look at the slopes as we're coming off, uh, we'll see that this, the slope becomes increasingly negative over to a point, and then it increases again, then it becomes negative. And we can see these two points over here, the maximum negative curvature at these two points on the, um, on the curve. And then right here at the inflection point, which would be associated with the fault, we have a little maximum here. So uh, the slope um, becomes reaches its kind of maximum negative, it increases it a little bit, then it goes negative again, and we see that over here in the uh, in this uh, curve. And then I've just kind of highlighted the relationship of the curvature gradient, this uh, blue line here to the curvature, uh, this uh, uh, aqua or turquoise line right over here. Again, just to highlight the relative position of the uh, uh, maximum negative curvature in this case, and the uh, curvature at the fault plane. So if we show all together here, we've got the uh, structure that we're using, just again, just a sinusoid, we've got the curvature, we've got the uh, gradient of curvature, and you can see that there is a kind of a, a rise here, there is a, a, a bit of a peak here between the uh, two peaks over over here, this, this little peak, actually negative curvature, uh, occurs right at the uh, fault. So the faulted and fracture zones will be located midway uh, between the peaks in the curvature gradient, these two peaks over here. And, and just, you know, for uh, uh, just for fun, I just took the curvature of the curvature here just to show that we get accentuated uh, uh, radii of curvature of the curvature uh, over the uh, peak. In, in this case, the oscillating circle lies below the line, so this is negative over here. It lies above the line. And again, we're looking at the curvature of the curvature, and it, it, it does accentuate the uh, curvature over here. This would be the uh, uh, inflection point. Okay, so some of the things that you see in the literature, uh, there's an example like this, um, and the relationship which is often touted then is a, a, a kind of a justification for using the uh, gradient of the curvature is shown in this example over here where we have a, uh, a structure, and uh, you can see it's kind of rising up on the flank of a structure here. We have uh, not an overturn, but a steep dip here. And this is shown to represent the curvature, and then this is the curvature gradient, the derivative of the curvature. And you can see that we get, uh, you know, quite a quite a bit different result using the um, uh, the example that we use, which is a, a sinusoid. Here we we don't get anything at all like this. Uh, so this particular example here is is represented in such a way that the radius of curvature increases to infinity. Uh, you know. On, both, both sides, uh, so that the curvature decreases to zero. And the peak and the gradient at the inflection point is pronounced, in, in, at least in this rendition. Uh, we'll try next time, we'll try to replicate this and see how it goes. But um, uh, also back here, notice that the uh, curvature has the opposite sign. In other words, it has the same sign as the structure. So the osculating circle here lies above the line. Um, and in that case, the convention has changed. And remember, you will run into these differences. So we have negative curvature here. And this works out a lot better. It's more kind of aligned with the structural structure. Uh, negative curvature over the syncline 
positive curvature over the anticline. So again, that's just a matter of convention. And you can see here where in this example that we started off with, we have, um, uh, we have negative curvature. Uh, we, well, we have positive curvature over the uh, syncline and negative curvature beneath the uh, anticline. So if we flip that around then, which would give us the same representation that we have over here, then we see that we have um, uh, curvature over here is negative around the syncline, positive over the anticline, and then this would be the gradient of curvature. Notice that the gradient of curvature in this case is not a peak. Uh, it, it actually lies in a saddle between two peaks. And you might argue that, well, that's because the, uh, uh, this is a broader structure than represented in the uh, example uh, over here. This is a, kind of a steeper dip between two um, broader, uh, uh, more extensive uh, anticlines and synclines. But we do see something different. We do see this um, saddle in the gradient of the uh, curvature. So you kind of get the feeling that, that if this works, it's really going to depend on a fairly specialized um, uh, structure. It, it, it requires a very steep structural uh, limb at the fault and rather gradual um, uh, structure uh, on the anticline and the uh, on the anticline and the uh, syncline. So um, <clears throat> what we're going to do is, and we'll uh, we'll do this next time. So yeah, we'll do this next time. This is a, a fifth order Chebyshev uh, polynomial, and you can see that we do have uh, a steeper steeper limb over here. We have kind of more uh, shallowy dip shallow dipping uh, limbs on the anticline and uh, up dip on from the syncline. So maybe we can make this work. Maybe we can get this uh, result. Maybe we can get a result that's a little bit different than what we got for our sinusoid where we have uh, actually have a saddle here sitting over the inflection point. What will we get over the inflection point here? That would be the question and uh, that we need to think about for next time. And can we bring these two peaks together into a single large peak? So next time we'll take a look at the curvature and curvature gradient of a tighter fold. We'll be using this uh, fifth order Chebyshev uh, polynomial to do that. So uh, uh, thanks for joining me. Hope you all are doing well and um, see you next time.